we came out and we, we met the main body of guys uh, outside the alleyway we'd gone down. Uh, it was unexpected because we thought they were still around the corner that we were going to go around and, and ambush them. Uh, but we were expecting to fight them, so, you know, we launched straight into it. Uh, and last, during the last fight, uh, at one point, uh, Croesus uh, got sucked into, well, we, we hit the guy with the guy in the ribcage and wound up killing the guy in the ribcage. Um, and so then he, the big guy, tried sucking Croesus in there to replace him. Uh, but Croesus had this weird ability that let him immediately do a saving throw, and so he just, you know, popped in and popped right back out again. Forced his way out of the ribcage immediately. Yeah, he was like, no, <laughs> no, that's not happening. <laughs> I actually improved the party's tactical situation because he was able to exit on the other side of him, <laughs> yeah, so, that so he was, was no longer right. trapped in the uh, <laughs> he went, went alleyway. Via the guy's ribcage <laughs> to the other side of the guy. Um, and oh, and there was another fun thing that was happening. One of the uh, the elves uh, had tried to corner Cricket down this uh, this narrow little alley. Uh, and as soon as he got in there, Cricket did this weird teleporty movie around type thing to corner him instead. Uh, and that was fun. Uh, and then uh, this session began. So now what was the sequence of events? It started with the enemy's turn. Yeah. Um, so, the first thing that happened was the big, he went the big ribcage guy tried to Bengals, go for serendipity. Or top of tower, shepherd of soul, strider through time. And um, he, he pulled her into his ribcage, and she shrunk up and started shriveling. Um, and she didn't have that special saving throw thing, so she actually went in there. And immediately, when the, I said that she was starting to shrivel, the question came. Did her, are her clothes starting to shrivel? And uh, and and I was like, I yes. don't know. And, and the they're like, so do her clothes like, fall off then? Yes. And <laughs> and then we can see everything. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, <laughs> her clothes fell off. Nobody's seen everything. It's um, it's a, she's a, she's a gnome, gnome so her whole yeah. body is covered. You don't never see her they face. Was, so I think they were mostly wanting to see her face, but it was just very it was creepy. weird. Yeah, it's like, oh, are her clothes off yet? <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah. unexpected. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yeah. so that happened. Yeah. And so, so Serendipity got sucked into that thing's ribcage. And as soon as that happened, his eyes went wide with, with sort of surprise. And he reached down and put his hand on the head of, um, oh, what was it? The, it was a drow, I think. It was, uh, no, it was the... Um, the blue the, guy? The, the blue the mage elf. elf. Oh, put his, right. put his he- hand on her head, and her eyes went wide, and she bolted from, from the fight. And so we promptly assumed, oh, he somehow read Serendipity, Van Gogh, Shadow, Nord, Top, Lord, Tower, Shepherd of Souls, Strider, Two Times, Mind, got some kind of secret from her, possibly time travel related, and needed to, like, you know, get that secret out. So we're like, oh, crap, he's... Given the secret of that guy, we gotta we gotta stop that guy from running. Oh, and we should also rescue Serendipity Van Gogh's Shadow Lord Top of Tower Shepherd Souls Try the Time, because she's trapped in that guy's ribcage, having her soul devoured. Uh, so two two priorities. Um, so Croesus went after the guy running away with the secret. This is actually a girl. But anyway. Girl running away with a secret. Um, he knew his priorities. Uh, and he had her marked, and he had an ability that lets you teleport to a marked person. So I have her running away. I'm like, yeah, she's gotten away for sure. He teleports to her, hits Lodestone. her, and does an ability that makes it so she can't move to any square other than one next to him next round. Lodestone lure. And the way it's worded, that includes teleport and everything. Yep. So just she's she can't, locked, she's she locked can't down. Leave, she can't leave Croesus for a round. Croesus basically caught her. Uh, meanwhile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so meanwhile, um, Cricket sees what's going on, and this guy that that she had cornered and she was fighting, not important anymore. Got to rescue Serendipity. Then go to more top of the tower. She also tries her time. Um, and so she just like, yeah, you're not important anymore, and focuses on that. And the other and the guy that was fighting is like, whoa, whoa, me. And spends the whole combat with Cricket ignoring him, 
while he flails away helplessly rolling ones on his opportunity attacks, <laughs> accomplishing nothing. It was wonderful. Yeah, he missed it was glorious. A lot of times. So glorious. <laughs> and he, he was sort of like a swashbuckling guy. He was one of the blue and white cultist yeah. elves. And he was like, ha ha! Oops! Ha ha! <laughs> and just missed every single time. And he's like, pay attention to me, I'm swashbuckling! And Cricket's like, bigger priorities, never mind. <laughs> Um, so I can't remember what she did that round. I think, I think she just shot, she shot the ribcage guy to pull him closer, to keep him from getting away. She got him back next to Aurora again, so that he was he, weakened. He, he had shifted away from Aurora so he wouldn't be weakened yeah. anymore, and then now Cricket things pulled, had opened up. Cricket pulled him back adjacent to Aurora, because Aurora's got this awesome ability that weakens every foe adjacent to her. It's awesome. That means they do half damage on everything they do. Except ongoing damage. Yeah, well, the, the soul-sucking that they're doing is not an ongoing damage thing. It's an attack they do. Uh, so that was working on that. Uh, yeah, because he was, he was draining Serendipity's life force to heal himself. But it, it was interesting. It, was, it wasn't ongoing damage, it was just a minor action on his turn. Which was halved because he was weakened. So that was good. Um, and I can't remember what Hank was, I think Hank was just pounding on the uh, on the ribcage guy I think so yes he changed everyone focused on the ribcage guy because serendipity was inside yeah. and especially once they took their next turn yeah and she failed her save and I said okay you don't get any more saves now yeah so, you're just in the side of this guy yeah so we gotta get, we gotta pry her out right she's not getting out on her own um, so then it's the bad guy's turn again and Ribcage Guy goes and puts his hand on another guy oh, and yeah. transfers the secret to another guy. Because he got pulled in again. Uh, Cricket pulled in. Well, he, got, he, he wanted got, to run, but Cricket pulled in. Well, he, actually, he had just shifted away at that point, and then you yeah. guys wailed on him, and so then things changed. He, so yeah. he, he enlightened another guy, and then he himself bolted yeah. at full tilt. So now, there's, so now we got three guys running. Uh, Drosus, <laughs> and they left behind the swashbuckling the guy swashbuckling who had no guy. idea what was going on. He was like, what? Everyone, what? Everyone's what? just running off. Ah. <laughs> and Cricket's ignoring him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so now we've got... We've basically got three targets we care about and one we don't. Right. Um, and Croesus has one of the targets locked down. And then the other two, they run off. And Hank goes charging after Ribcage Guy. Yeah. Um, and does a cool throw his sword at him thing. Because this Ribcage Guy is pretty fast. I think. Mm. Is he faster than Hank or is he about the He's same? He's about the same. About He's the same got the same. grappling hook though, right? Yeah, he only thought of that later on. Uh, and also, it's a standard action to use, so he yeah. wouldn't have been able to attack. With, I right. guess he could use an action point. Yeah, the, it'd, it'd be good for catching up to but, him. But yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he came running after him, and he used a cinematic point to throw his sword far enough, because it was still out of range, even though he had right. the range uh, yeah. the range 5 on it. Hank switched to a sword now? He uses a sword and a hammer, oh, okay. and, he, swaps and he has an effect that lets him swap them for free, as a free action. Uh, okay. So he uses a, he uses the sword for his sword, sword mage abilities, oh, and he right, uses the hammer for his yeah. barbarian abilities, and so he's just always like flipping them out, hitting the guy with the sword, flipping out his hammer, hitting him with the hammer. Yeah, he has a feat, and he is a multi-class. To he has he got an elf in his head, and a lot of things changed for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that stuff happens sometimes. He's got two souls. Yeah. Um. Oh right. So he throws his sword at the at the ribcage guy. Ribcage mm. guy. Um, he did a massive amount of damage with that one, as I recall. I guess we like, should we could call like him a soul devourer. Forward. It's probably a little bit more epic sounding than Ribcage guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he threw his yeah. sword at him and it hit him. Yep. Even though he had a minus five from running. Mm. Yep. Did a bunch of damage, did but it didn't drop him. Yep. And uh, who was dealing with the third uh, and the the other enlightened elf? I can't remember. Was Aurora? Um, he sh- I think no. He tried running past Croesus, and Croesus hit him too, didn't he? Or something um, like that. He had to. Ru- he, he, so what happened was he ran near Croesus, mm. and um, Croesus. No one was really dealing with him this round. That's what. Yeah. Was, that's the. He fact just ran. Him. He was just running, yeah. and Croesus. I. 
remember? What did he do? I think he just hit the the, yeah. the mage girl who was running away. Oh no, she didn't run away because she came after Cricket next round. Yeah, she just stayed there because right. she couldn't she move that there. round. Yes, because mm. she, she got him. She blinded Croesus. That's what right. happened. She blinded Croesus with this big blast of light, right. which was awesome because all the other enemies then just ran right past him because yeah. he was blind. But she couldn't yeah. move because. She was because of, of the lure that he had on her. Yeah. She couldn't move anywhere except for next to Croesus. No, no, it's the other one. The, Thank you. There was the oh, one that yeah. was adjacent to Croesus, and there was one that was still back a ways. That's the the mage was next to Croesus. Right. The 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 drow had run past, yeah. and then Croesus wanted to hit the drow, but he couldn't see where they were. Mm-hmm. So he made he made a listen check to try to figure out where he was. He made he figured out where he was, rolled an attack and missed because he was blind. Yeah. So he did not. Right. And then the next next round of the enemies came around, because I don't know, right? And that was the round that the cricket went through the window. Went through the window. Yeah. So basically, every everyone is running off that way to go around like some a buried buildings because it's like an undercity. It used to be a town long ago, got buried, so now the streets are caves. Uh, and so we're adjacent to this building, and from my previous scouting. Uh, I know where these guys came from originally, uh, <laughs> and it's basically through this building I'm adjacent to, and around a corner. And so I am like, well, there's a window because we went through, the, we fired through the window to fry the, uh, the, the minions. The minions. Uh, Cricket climbs through the window and takes a shortcut to try and get around on the other side. Right. Uh, and so Swashbuckler dude tries to. Uh, opportunity attack Cricket as she climbs in the window and he she ignores him. Um, he hits the window frame a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and so she goes in and around and opens the, the back door of the building uh, and is just waiting because the the next round uh, Soul Devourer uh, I like Ribcage Guy better. <laughs> anyway, Soul Devourer is going to come around. So she's all there. Ready action. Yeah. Well, she, she didn't ready oh. in action. She didn't have uh, yeah. the spare yeah. things for that. But she's going to have a round next round after he shows up. And she's got timeless check of Mithrendane in reserve. <laughs> but saving that for special occasion. Mm. Uh, and what's more special than saving Serendipity Bengals, Shadowmalore, Top Road Tower, Shepherd, Souls, Strider Through Time. Yeah. Sorry, Yeah. No, no. So the, uh, the drow continues running. And the mage, she decides, she's out of Croesus, says you can't move anywhere, but next to me thing. And so she runs... She goes in after She Cricket. runs through the door and goes into the same room Cricket's in, taking the same shortcut Cricket's yeah. taking, and runs uh, basically right behind Cricket. Yeah. And the swashbuckler guy does the same thing. Yeah. He runs and attacks Cricket and fails. Yeah, I ignore um, him. <laughs> And uh, the the um, the mage is not able to attack Cricket because she used her whole turn to run yeah. there. And Cricket's standing in the doorway, so the mage can't mm. you know he can't run past it anyway. So the, uh, she's feeling pretty good about this tactical situation. The soul devourer rounds the corner and comes running up and comes right up to where <laughs> Cricket is waiting for him. Within five squares, which is the range of timeless track of his rende. I was thinking I'd have to run out there and open the, the yeah. doorway. Yeah. But no, I can stay right in the doorway and. <laughs> Timeless Trek him. So, yeah. So then the party's turn comes, and our Timeless Trek is uh, uh, Soul Devourer, mm-hmm. uh, which gives everyone... The, the thing about time, uh, Timeless Trek of Mithrendane is an awesome ability that basically uh, takes the attacked foe, and they disappear save ends. Uh, so you get at least one round where they're just out of combat. And then every round after that, they have like a 50% chance of coming back into combat. A little bit better for this guy because he's in the lead. They have a bonus in their saving throws. Uh, so this is going to give everyone time to catch up and get in position and all like wait around for mm-hmm. where uh, the Soul Devourer is going to reappear so they can pound on it. Um, so that was great. The, the other guys, uh, Croesus and Hank... Croesus killed, killed the drow. Ah, <laughs> yes. He, it, it, he just... No, no, it was, no, yeah, he killed the drow. Yeah, he, he just, just killed him. Like, he had, like, two hit points left. Yeah. So he easily killed him, and then they start running around, and, and Hank's, Hank beam shots into place, ready yeah. for where the soul devourer is about to reappear. Yeah. And, uh, but the, um, but the enemies, the, the, the enlightened the wizard. wizard and the swashbuckler, she's, she says to Cricket, thanks for opening the door. Teleports She's out, teleport. teleports yeah. out the door, and then runs down the side passage that's like yeah. beyond where they where they were. 
him. And the Swashbuckler also has an ability where he can move eight squares and attack one enemy during it and move through enemy squares. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So he moves through Crocus, or Cricket. Cricket Square, swashbucklingly attacking her and missing. And, uh, <laughs> but I don't know if he ever actually succeeded. No, I, I don't know if he hit anyone the yeah. whole... No, no, I did get one or two hits on Cricket at, at one point. He but. did make a difference early on. He did this attack on, on Cricket... That's that slowed you, and that made it yes. so you couldn't reach someone. So he that did was, do something that's annoying actually once. Why I went through the window was because I was slowed at the time. <laughs> yes, and I was like, well, I can't run anyway. I'll take the shortcut, and that'll probably make it even. And so they both head down this side passage, and he stands in the front to to protect her mm. while she runs as far as she can down the side passage. Yeah, but, but the way they get, she she's like three squares further than Swashbuckler Dude. So Cricket runs up to Swashbuckler Dude, right up to him, gets out her bola and throws it past the Swashbuckler Dude. <laughs> Who makes an attack mark? Who makes an attack and misses, of course. <laughs> yep. uh, and I entangle the, the fleeing mage and, and she's immobilized for a round. Right. Um, <laughs> and so I'm still ignoring Swashbuckler Dude. It's well, awesome. and, and I, I think one of the key, thing, key factors... That really affected it was then the the soul devourer failed his save and so he was gone for a whole other round. Oh, <laughs> so the man. rest of the party was ready to action now. So then um, she was and so she was stunned for a round or immobilized. Immobilized uh, and also slowed because the uh, it was a lullaby bola and that part. <laughs> Unfortunately, she didn't fall asleep. She didn't fall asleep. Uh, yeah. And she all, saved out of the slug. The whole party was standing ready for the Soul Devourer now, and they were already in place, so they were just all ready to action yeah. to wail on it when he reappeared. Yeah. Um, and so he reappeared, and, and they all wailed on him. And then it was a party's turn, so they wailed on him again. <laughs> and so and they, yeah, they, they destroyed him. So he, he collapsed to the ground, and his rib cage came open and serendipity fell out. And he fell to the ground and collapsed into a pile of bones. Then he melted into black goo and evaporated into the air, yeah. into nothing. They'd all been doing that. But They'd did all Serendipity have clothes on? She did. <laughs> that, that question came up again. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, very important. So that ability that made the disappear, is that a, like a class daily power? Or yeah, it's, like a, some it's a daily power, uh, a bard daily power. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a really <laughs> awesome. Why does that play Mm, what was that? Why does yeah. anyone so. play <laughs> so everyone had taken their turn killing the Soul Devourer, pretty much, except for Serendipity, who immediately, you know, awakened from this horrible state, was made aware of the mage running away, and cast that blocking fireball thing. Um, Put the fireball, you know, the, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the like level sphere. one flaming yeah. sphere <laughs> on the other side. On the other side of this one, one square corridor. <laughs> that she's running away from. Yeah. Now, I, I had previously ruled that, you know, it's dumb that it completely blocks you. You can run through that and you just get double damage from an attack. Right. It, you could, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but as it turns out, the initial attack from the fireball was enough to, t- was more than her hit points. So I had her just, she, she'd just come out of a mobilize, so she went running down the corridor, the fireball appeared in front of her, she tripped through it, and her burnt skeleton fell out through the other <laughs> side, landed, and then melted mm. into goo and disappeared. Right. Oh, which had also happened to the drow. He yeah. also disappeared. Yeah, everyone also everyone we killed was evaporating. Yeah, melting. And then all yeah, that was left... All, time ages. all that was left was that swashbuckler dude, who knew nothing about why everyone had started running. <laughs> right. So we captured him. Mm. Um, and also at this point, we remembered that, oh yes, when we set up this combat, there was also one of those lava lightning elementals. Yeah, which we had completely forgotten we completely about. Forgot. Really yeah, yeah, I forgot about him entirely. So we decided he just died of loneliness or something. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't know what happened to him. It was sad because I actually really wanted one of them to get away. Mm. This actually kind of throws a wrench in my plans. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, that elemental would have been there. That would have been one more guy. Yeah. He could have gotten it have, away. It would have made things more complicated. Maybe someone would have got away. Because it was pretty close on that wizard there. Uh, if Cricket hadn't hit with that bola, yeah. she'd have been gone. Yeah. Like that. And as we later found out, she was going someplace that would have been really hard to follow her to. Oh, yeah? We'll get to that. Uh, first, we got to interrogate Swashbuckler Dude. <laughs> uh, so... 
Yeah. Like, he's a fail buckler. Yeah, he's he's a fail buckler. (laughs) And so we start interrogating him, and it's, of course, Aurora's good cop, and Mm -hmm. uh, initially Krosis was bad cop, but I think Hank took over the role of that. Yeah, he had a, they had a change of heart. Well, there was some discussion because at first they were talking about like figuring out what he is by like essentially vivisecting him. <laughs> yeah, because these <laughs> these guys fade into goo when yeah. they, they fade away when they die. So if you want to dissect one, you have to do it before he dies. Yeah, and they I, I think at first they they weren't really thinking. And then they're like, yeah, I guess that's kind of horrible. Yeah, yeah it's pretty horrifying. So we'll just inspect his crotch. <laughs> well, there, there was that. There was that because because the, the skinwalkers. There's there we were these. Fought them they, they fought, the, the minions were these skinwalkers that had like you know they were they killed an enemy and then the that it was they were like urgently sort of an, taking an it over thing. and when you killed it the ooh, the black goo just like oozed out from inside their yeah. torso onto the ground and the co- corpse collapsed and the black goo evaporated. Yeah. Right. And so since the black goo had when they died it had like you know. It, the, the the insertion point into the torso was from the bottom. Right. They're like, okay, first we got to inspect his crotch. So Krosis did that because he doesn't really care about yeah. such things. He's just like, whatever. Yeah. I made yeah. a crystal. Yeah. He was, so yeah, first thing we did was inspect his crotch. He was, <laughs> he was a little bit nonplussed. Um, <laughs> well, he was already kind of. Ups- he was he, just we, yeah. Belligerent. He had no idea what was going on. It was all stupid. And now we're inspecting his crotch, but. He wasn't a skinwalker because his crotch was intact. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> sometimes weird things happen. Um, so then we started talking about, oh, okay, so we finally have captured one of these guys that we're pretty sure is one of these. You kill them and they, they disappear again. Yeah, they turn into goo. So let's find out what they freaking are. Yeah. And so we, that was why we started talking about the vivisecting thing. Right. Uh, we ended up discarding that because that's kind evil. of evil. Evil. Um, but we did cut off a bit of his hair, mm. and it went like that. Mm. So we're like, aha, there. That, Science. That will come in important later, I'm yes. sure. Uh, and it, it sure did later on when we went topside again to, to recuperate. Mm. Aurora went on a quest to get hair samples from everyone in town. Yeah. Um, and she's got like a 40 <laughs> diplomacy, so... Yeah. She could go up to you and ask to cut off a piece of your hair. Yeah. And you would say, you'll agree. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. That seems completely reasonable. Yeah. And then when it turned into goo, yeah. she'd kill you. Well, she was explicitly... I'm sort of skipping ahead yeah. a little bit, but it's not a relevant thing, so whatever. Uh, she was actually asking people, you know, I'd, I'd like some of your hair so I can make sure you're not made of soup. Mm. <laughs> Diplomacy check. Okay, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm not made of soup. Yeah. So anyway, back to interrogating this guy. He was just... he. Did he have a name? Uh, I don't think he ever told us a name even. No, he, he was... He was totally not telling us anything. Mm. Um, he was he was just miserable and and Aurora was like don't don't you just want to you know don't you want to live for something and it was like talking to you is the worst torture I can possibly imagine. Yeah, I would rather die than talk to you. Um, so eventually he just was not telling us anything and so eventually we did execute him. I think it was was it Hank that did it? I think so. Yeah. They, they, he he claimed that he would you know, surrender and 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 he talk to them, but just, really he was just yeah. whatever, desperately trying to escape. To get away. He's not. He would rather die than tell them anything. Oh, yeah. He just wanted to play for time. And yeah. when it became apparent that that wasn't going to work, he was just like, "I welcome death. I don't, I don't care. It'll be, yeah. it'll be, it'll be better than being with you." <laughs> so. Okay. Smash. It's always so sad when our enemies tell us. Well, and when they did kill him, I think I think Hank uh, killed him with his sword. He he his his angry face did smile uh, did fade to a smile of, of relief before he faded away to nothing. So. Yeah. Um. Oh no. Uh. We we did uh, reveal history on him. Mm. That was one thing that was actually informative. Mm. Um. And cause John no end of distress. Yeah, it, it's a ritual. Think of three pivotal moments from this random NPC who was just a combatant <laughs> that was in a battle. Yeah. What's the three most pivotal moments of their life? Come on, tell me right now. 
Well, he met this weird satyr you thing come up and with couldn't that. hit her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that actually was one of them. I mean, it's, it's, always, Butler, it's yeah. always a great uh, cop-out. I mean, I'm a DM that's had to deal with that exact issue. <laughs> That's also true. Um, like one of the most pivotal moments was was him being tied up, talk, talking to Aurora, yeah. and and being miserable. Yeah. That's prob- so, that was one of the most pivotal moments of his that. life. Uh, so then another of the moments um, was kind of weird. Uh, we saw an alley full of dead elves, hmm. uh, and he wasn't to be seen in this alley of dead elves. But and um, serendipity, Van Gogh, Sardamar, Topper, Tower, Shepherd, Souls, Dragon of Time did a fashion check on the corpses and identified the style of clothing as being from a couple of centuries ago. A long, long, ago. long ago. Um, yeah. And she also did an arcana check and was aware that something was being suppressed from the image, but she couldn't tell what it was, so... Hmm. It's time mage nonsense. We've come in across this yes. kind of thing before. Have you she tried was... cutting off some of your own hairs? Uh, Aurora insisted everyone do that. Mm, okay. okay. And no, they, nobody was souped? No. Nobody is made of soup. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and then the third one... I'm trying to remember what the third one was. There were three um, moments. It was this... It was, there, was amazing, this there was this elf... And there was this. There was this huge explosion of, of like gray oh, stuff, right, the chaos overlapping thing. gray stuff everywhere. That, that was yeah. the third scene. Yeah. yeah. And it was, um, and it just it, it looked like overlapping Swirling chaos, gray forms of some kind, and okay. just like every everything. And there was this elf in the middle of it going, ah, you know, co- covering his yeah. covering his face as he's as something horrible is happening to him. Right. So my theory is <clears throat> that these guys that are quote-unquote made of soup mm-hmm. are actually people from alternate timelines mm-hmm. that no longer exist. Okay. They, they like died or something and then the time mages went and yoinked them out before they died or something right. like that. And that's why we're getting these weird double images. We're getting the you know, the image of what the actual current timeline says and the image of what it was at the time. It's mm-hmm. all... that That's my theory. Unconfirmed, but I obviously think it's right. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that was really interesting. I mean, and we killed them and moved on. So... Uh, he was also Croesus called him a chaos creature, mm. and he was really offended by that. Yeah. But he was like, I can't believe you would. It's disgusting when you <laughs> call me that. On top of everything else you've called. So then we moved on, <clears throat> and <clears throat> we went down the tunnel that these guys had been trying to flee down. Um, and after traveling through some twisty yes. passages and stuff for a little while. We got to this ledge overlooking this huge cavern with some more of the town's remains in it. Mm-hmm. And it's just full of drow and elves and stuff. And at least three more ribcage guys are sold about. And so we immediately were like, oh, okay. It's like a big undercity that... Yeah. It's part of the undercity and happens to have like a dome area over so it's like... You can see a fair amount of it, and there's just yeah. there's a whole bunch of them living there. Yeah, we're like, okay, good thing they didn't get away because if they'd managed to get here, mm-hmm. yeah, you would have had to flee hardcore. Oh yeah, but they would have had serendipity been gold started more top of the tower, shepherd's mm-hmm. whole strike at the time. So anyway, and presumably we'd be on a pretty tight schedule to get her back because she's in a soul devourer. That yeah. doesn't sound like a healthy long-term proposition. Mm-hmm. So I assume you could put a cricket in there and she'd be fine. And it would start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I kept proposing that experiment, but we you never got able to guardians to... counter your way. Nope, I I was always too far away. Mm-hmm. Cricket could use the fact that it never attacked her as more <laughs> argument like it yeah. do. Anyway. Cricket doesn't really feel she needs an argument. She just knows the truth. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so they... There was basically a whole bunch of these guys. I, they saw us. 
mm-hmm. and we're like, ah, charge. But um, there was like a ladder leading up to the ledge, so we kicked the ladder off and uh, and then ran. And that allowed us enough of a head start that there really wasn't any any issue to it. And so we ran up topside and got out of the dungeon. Mm. Now, one thing... Um, now, are you in the past or you're in the present? The present. Present. Okay. So one thing I know is oh, um, oh. that side passage... Um, that they that she had run down at um, it was recently dug with um, you know beams holding it up and they attached to the cave where they had fought the drow before and they found all these uh, well there was all these signs of battle and, and bloodshed and all these makeshift fortifications prote- like blocking mm-hmm. where those guys were from from attacking the drow so they had obviously had some big fight there with mm. the drow. And they found their way into the drow area from there. So the drow had dug a had dug from the cave into the ruins, had encountered these guys, and had gone well for them. And their butts kicked. <clears throat> of course, that doesn't really tell us much much about how tough they are, because like five levels ago, we wiped out an entire fortress full of drow. Drow are easy, mm. as it turns out. Of course, we don't have any magma cannons this time around. So. <laughs> anyway. You just find another weapon that the drow built and turn it against them. <laughs> well, we've been using the Panadar pretty effectively. <laughs> so we go topside. And we're wandering around the city. Um, doing some of the, the downtime stuff for the next day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Some of the party members are suffering from time sickness. Mm -hmm. So we do a a rest and a saving throw. And everyone gets out of it, except for Acrosis, who I think gets worse on his first check. No, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And Serendipity even goes to more Poor Tim, because he's like, he's like, I want Croesus to like, you know, develop as a character, but he's like, it's like, oh wait, well, I forgot everything. Just Croesus just regrets. He's yeah. like how he used to be. And it's hilarious because um, uh, Stacia, or whatever was pretending to be Stacia, had said that uh, by using this um, Panadar, Croesus will get better, and. We basically reset him back to <laughs> how bad he was at the beginning of the campaign. Yeah. Now, I just mean saying that he's that much closer to getting, getting all power. the power. Yeah, that's true. So anyway, um, some people asked around about earthquakes, and they're like, "Why would there be an earthquake? The, the city's guarded against earthquakes." It's Ever a, since it's the, the zombie city apocalypse, in the, it's yeah, the safest city in the world. Mm-hmm. And they asked about how it's falling into sinkholes, and they're like, why would that happen? It makes no sense. So we actually have, on the net, undestroyed more of the city than we have destroyed. Nobody will ever know that except us, of course, because we did it by time travel and stuff. But, you know, at least we only have Kalinar on our backs now, so... Yeah. Serendipity went to the library and looked up uh, the history of the stuff, and she found out that the words from earthquakes were added at the same time as the zombie uh, words were added, with no particular reason why. Just, they don't record that. It's just it was added then. Our war board just managed it, I guess. Yeah. So... <clears throat> This is, I think, pretty close to where the session ended now. Um, I think Serendipity, when I go to Sarah Motor Top or Tower Shepherd Souls, tries to time, managed to get out of the, the time time sickness. Everyone eventually... Except Process. Everyone eventually got over it, except for Process. Um, Hank went to the Spell oh. Blades to tell them... Because mm-hmm. they decided they... <clears throat> they they want to like wipe out this colony, right? They don't want to. Um, There's things called soul devourers down there. That's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. So they went and told the spellblades about it, and they talked to a guy, and he's like, "Okay, yeah, I'll tell my superiors, and we'll get back to you tomorrow." So 
that was left hanging. And so next session we'll probably head down there with an army of spellblades at our side. Mm-hmm. And that'll be interesting. Um, and then we might get back to the time traveling stuff because Eleanor is coming. We gotta. I think they gave up on Stacia's fake family. Hmm. At this point, they're either hostages that will eventually be recovered by the big assault, or they're long dead. My guess is long dead. Or never existed in the first place. (laughs) Never existed is such a nebulous thing in this campaign. (laughs) Actually, it is really nebulous because without the sinkholes and stuff, the circumstances of our arrival, of what happened after our arrival in town will be different now. Mm. Probably that cobblestone is back in place. We've time duplicated the cobblestone. Gotta go check on that. Do we have to bring both of them home now? <laughs> How does that work? When we're fighting these bad guys, why do they have to run away? Why can't they just stay put and let us kill them? I know it sounds stupid when I put it that way, but... You know, it's just annoying when they run away, and then we got to chase them, and sometimes they get away. But when it has one of our team members inside of it, we can't let it get away, and... I don't know, it seemed to have learned some, like, information or something, or something from Serendipity, and, like, pass it on to the other guys, and that's why they retreated, because they knew something. And we can't let them get away with that, but it's just so annoying having to chase down so many people, but, you know... Having a sword that I can call back to my hand helps, because I threw it at him. And that was actually pretty cool. Huh. Somehow I feel like I I missed out on a lot of this. This combat. Just... Suddenly it was over. Funny that. Um, uh, hi, hi. uh, I'm Croesus. I'm a, a guardian of the Atar. Atar. No, he's. I'm Cro Croesus. I. I'm here. This 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 is. A. Why is there a goat here? Who are you? I'm Cricket. I belong to you. But I'm not sorry, I'm I'm a little bit um I'm here Yes to buy Yes some stuff. Uh, everything I have what is was, yours. No, this is a store. Well look look uh I need I'm I'm climbing. I'm 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 always, always, always climbing. I. What is this place? Uh, this is an inn. We're resting. Um. Oh. Excuse me, sir. I just need to take a little hair sample to make sure that you're not made out of soup. No, not that kind of soup, like black, gooey stuff. Yeah, just a little hair sample. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, no, I don't mind at all. Oh, you want me to sign that for you? Sure, Aurora. There you go. Oh, yeah, anytime. Sure, I can take hair samples from your whole family. Yeah, I'll be here for uh, about another half hour. Yeah, bring them on by. Okay, oh, you're welcome. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm so... I hope your mother is feeling better soon, too. Mm Mm-hmm. It was nice to meet you. Bye.